Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Daniel Harris. Uh, I am a graduate of uh, TWC in 2007. I did it during the summer session. I interned on the Hill with U.S. Senator Frank Lautenberg of New Jersey. Uh, I, I had a great experience. It, it really helped steer me. Uh, my whole goal in life was to go to law school. Per that, uh, that internship experience, along with the other internship experiences in college, steered me towards public service. Uh, today, I'm in my 11th year uh, with uh, Assemblyman uh, Craig Coughlin of uh, New Jersey. He, for the past three years, he's been the speaker. So I am uh, his legislative director. Absolutely love what I do and the TWC helped me get to uh, where I am. So uh, thank you, Laura, for having me. Look forward to answering your questions today. Thank you so much, Dan. Fabulous introduction. And Ariel, how about you go next? Thank you, Laura. So hi, my name is Ariel Giordano. I am a spring 2012 graduate of the Washington Center. I interned with Congressman Ben Quayle. He's uh, no longer in office, but he is the son of Dan Quayle, former vice president. Um, I had always known I was going to go to law school, much like Dan, so same path. I went to Catholic in D.C., and while there, I worked for the Senate Judiciary for the former chairman, Chuck Grassley, before he moved to finance. Uh, when I started with him, he was actually the ranking member. And when I graduated from law school, I got a counsel job with the House Representatives Chairman Schuster at the time, and I was his railroad subcommittee legal counsel there. And then when he announced his retirement, I made the move to where I am now. I am the director of federal and state government affairs for Canadian Pacific Railroad. We are one of North America's largest freight railroads. There are seven large freight railroads and about 600 little ones. I'm responsible for our entire U.S. network of government affairs. I oversee the federal government and all 11 of our network states. So I do lobbying on both the federal side, the state side. I also do something called community affairs a little bit. So I deal with people that um, have issues with, and complain to mayors or state regulators. So I have a pretty kind of broad range in what I do. I also do a little bit of regulatory policy and legal uh, things for the company as well you know, agency rulemakings, and I obviously work a lot with the Hill. So my, my kind of staple of my career was being on the Hill, which is what I really wanted to do. And now I, I'm in government affairs and TWC kind of launched me into that direction. I wanted to be on the Hill. I wanted to go to law school. And that first internship is really what laid the foundation for me. That is fantastic. Thank you, Ariel. And Nancy, how about you go next? Great. Um, I'm a little older than the other speakers here. I actually did the uh, Washington Center in the 80s. Uh, while I was at college and spent my summers there and after graduating came right to Washington and really my lane that I developed around politics was fundraising and building networks and worked for various senators and presidential candidates and third person hired, hired by Bill Clinton in 1991 and ran the Mid-Atlantic fundraising and the inaugural fundraising and was actually the finance director of the Democratic National Committee was the job I wanted and um, then stumbled uh, into meeting uh, a senator at the time, Senator Evan, Evan Bayh of Indiana, and ended up working with him for about 15 years, building his national network. And then he decided to resign from the Senate because I think the whole process wore him. Then I came up with my own idea, which is called No Labels. It's a, it's a movement of Republicans, Democrats, independents, just people that wanna put the country first and uh, focus on what's best for the country. So I've spent the last 11 years focused on that, using every contact I know to fund it. And we, we now have a caucus of uh, members inside the United States Congress called the Problem Solvers Caucus. And as of a couple of weeks ago, we now have eight United States Senator partners, and we convene them uh, every couple of weeks in a Zoom meeting like this to start working on key issues that affect the country. So it's... Yeah. Very exciting work, and um, I, I really have taken all of the uh, skills of network building uh, to bear on this project. That is amazing. Thank you so much. And we need that now more than ever, that no labels party. So that's fabulous. And last but not least, Matthew. Hey, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Matt Mullen, and I am a summer of 2002 uh, TWC graduate. Um, I came from Ohio, grew up in Cleveland, went to Ohio Northern University, and I have been in Washington or the Washington area um, ever since uh, my, my internship uh, with the Washington Center. 
Uh, my internship uh, was at the uh, Office of the United States Trade Representative in the Executive Office of the President, where I worked on African um, related Sub Saharan Africa trade issues. Um, I worked on um, the um, Southern African Customs Union uh, trade negotiations that were ongoing at that time. Uh, and my uh, internship was um, really important to me. Uh, they set me up with my first job uh, post uh, graduation. I worked for an organization called the National Foreign Trade Council, uh, which was a business council uh, representing uh, primarily um, uh, major U.S. corporations uh, doing business overseas. Uh, and we were lobbyists all day, every day. Uh, in the last 10 years, I have been uh, with an organization called the International Economic Development Council, where I serve as their vice president of public policy, uh, programming, and communications. Um, my career has been very uh, association focused in one way, shape, or form, working for a 501c3 or a 501c6. Um, in, in one shape or form or another. Um, for the International Economic Development Council, I am the registered lobbyist, um, but I also do all of our communications, uh, and I also do all of our programming, which means I oversee all of our conferences, all of our webinars, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy to be here with you all today. This must be a very unique internship experience, so as much as I'm looking forward to sharing uh, my experience, I'm really uh, curious to hear from all of you um, how it's going. Uh, so um, congratulations for, for taking this step during this really crazy, crazy time. Um, you know, this, this type of thing is, is still important. Um, and, and almost unfortunately, 20 years later, um, you know, I still consider my, uh, my Washington Center experience to be, um, you know, top three most important things um, that I've ever done for my career. So um, with that, I'll, I'll stop there and look forward to the conversations. That was amazing and such a good place to leave off on. And before we get started with the panel, I do want to say we have a celebrity guest here. Uh, Chris Norton, the president of the Washington Center, is on the call as well. So say hello to Chris. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Great to see you, all of you, particularly the panelists. Nancy, it's nice to see you, too. Um, and uh, let's have a great uh, discussion. This sounds terrific. Thank you, Chris. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to get started with the panel. And my first question is for Ariel and Dan. So Ariel, what is your education background? So I went to Monmouth University. Um, so if there's any virtual people doing Monmouth, please make yourself known to me at some point. Um, big, big, uh, still involved at Monmouth at the alumni level. We still do a lot of political science alumni engagement. So I went to uh, I went to Monmouth, I got a BA in political science and history with minors in legal studies and public policy. And then I went to Catholic University for law school where I got a JD and I focused mostly in law school on legislative drafting, statutory interpretation were the classes I tried to kind of focus on the most to prepare myself for my career, which inevitably led me to the Hill and drafting legislation. So that's kind of my educational background. That's excellent, thank you. And Dan, what is your education background? Sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, uh, I went to St. Joseph's University in Philadelphia. Uh, if there's any hawks on there, uh, I'd love to hear from you as well. Uh, I studied political science and public administration. Again, my whole goal was to go to law school uh, throughout college, throughout really my entire life up until uh, college. Uh, one of the things I wanted to hit on uh, as part of my education was uh, internships. They teach you not only what you want to do, but also what you don't want to do. Uh, so I did three internships throughout college uh, as part of my education, really, with the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office, uh, the Washington Center in the summer of my junior, going into senior year with Senator Lautenberg. Then finally, what really kind of sealed the deal for my interest in public service and the legislature and public policy making was an internship with the Philadelphia City Council, um, a rookie legislator, uh, rookie councilman, so that, that really set the tone and, and again, uh, set the tone for the next 12 years uh, with the New Jersey State Legislature. So uh, I ultimately chose not to go to law school. I do have the itch, however, to go either back to law school or go get my master's in public policy. I, uh, I miss school terribly. I needed the break after college, just simply didn't have the time uh, to go back in time. That was excellent. I think a lot of people relate to the dream of going to law school and then thinking, you know what, I maybe not. <laughs> that happened to me for sure. Um, so thank you, both of you. The next question, I'll start with Matthew. What fields are you in? Clearly politics. Um, but how did you get into it? 
Yeah, um, I, I would say mostly by accident. Um, you know, I, I again, I grew up in, in Cleveland, Ohio, went to a relatively small school in Western Ohio, uh, was very involved in, in student government. You know, I was, I was studying political science and history. Uh, at the time, Northern was, was very active with the Washington Center, Center and sent uh, many students and it seemed like a, a good thing to do. Um, and, uh, you know, I lucked out with an amazing internship, um, you know, working at USTR and having a, a really great experience there and really discovered a, a, an interest in, um, you know, the different forms of public service um, and that, you know, the Washington area is, is, a, is a multi-million person uh, metropolitan region and a portion of those, a good portion of those folks work for the federal government, but there's also a huge um, um, industry of, of people that, you know, touch that space as well. Um, and so that, that really intrigued me and the possibility there. And that's probably what, what kept me in Washington. And, and to this point, um, you know, I've, I've been here now for a very long time uh, and, you know, consider this to be my, my permanent home, uh, you know, because of all the great things that, that uh, this region has. Um, and we can talk more about that in the breakouts. Excellent. Thank you. And Nancy, um, you are also in the fields of politics. How did you get into it? Hey, well, I was in college. I worked for a presidential candidate that I actually met on a summer, you know, with the Washington Center. So I attended a speaker uh, session and I started organizing and uh, the candidate was going to the convention. I got to go as an alternate delegate from the state of New York and and uh, I just, I think my time in uh, Washington over the summers and being able to go back to school and work on one of these campaigns really spurred my interest on. It's amazing. I really, I love that piece of working on campaigns too. I'm sure some students I know are doing internships with campaigns, so that is excellent. Okay, um, my next question is, we will start with Ariel. What was something you did not expect from your current career? So I absolutely did not expect to be working in the railroad industry. I never expected to work on the transportation committee. I had been working for Senate Judiciary doing constitutional, criminal, civil type law. So I mostly focused on human trafficking and juvenile justice, um, which was a, it, it was just happened that the attorney in the judiciary office that did those issues, she really took a liking to me and took me under her wing. But the way the Hill really works is there's a budget and within that budget, they can hire people. And one thing about Senator Grassley is his staff, he's very low turnover. Nobody wants to leave. They love working for him. And, you know, regardless of whether or not you're a Republican or Democrat, he was a very good boss. So it was a kind of a waiting game of, well, if a council leaves, that it's your position. But they also said, but we can't guarantee it's going to happen anytime soon. So for me, I had graduated from law school. I took the bar exam and I was still at judiciary as a legal fellow. And I said, I have to look for other council jobs. And they said, we understand, you know, can't wait forever. So my corporations professor from law school, who I had gotten along with very well, I asked her to get coffee with me. Uh, she actually used to be the general counsel of Amtrak and a partner at Williams and Connolly in DC. And she had said, you know, uh, an alum reached out to me from Catholic and he's the staff director of the railroad subcommittee for the transportation committee and they're hiring a council. And I said, I don't know anything about railroads. <laughs> and they were like, it's fine. You know, the Hill, they're probably not going to find someone entry level. So I, I said, okay, I'll, I'll interview. And I interviewed and I, I got dumped into the TNI committee um, two weeks before we started conferencing the FAST Act, which is um, the first major five-year surface reauthorization that had rail title. So I was, um, my function was really to make sure that everything was drafted as per, we wanted the way it would, we would want it to execute. So while I didn't understand the subject matter, my, there, my job there was the, the grammar, the punctuation during the conferencing. And then after that happened, I started working on other bills and learning the subject matter. So people are always asked like, how'd you get involved in railroads? It really wasn't a choice. I kind of just got tossed into it, but I actually like it so much more than the judiciary issues. It's tangible, it's real, I could see it. I go to our rail facilities and when I was on the Hill, I was able to do tours of facilities and I got to go on Codels to Europe and the Middle East and I went to Asia to see the maglev. I mean, in Japan, there's just, there are so many benefits of working in the rail industry and I actually, I, I, kind of, I really enjoy it now. It's definitely the most shocking side is that, how did I 
work with railroads. I'm, I'm from Jersey. <laughs> I was born in Brooklyn, New York, and I grew up in Jersey. Freight railroads aren't like a part of my life. So it's a, it's a really interesting kind of twist to my career. <laughs> I love that you are truly the only person I know that works in railroads and I love it so much. So <laughs> thank you. Okay. And, um, Dan, tell me what is something that you did not expect from your current career? Oh, wait, Dan, I think you're muted. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting that. You know, <laughs> five months into zoom and, uh, I'm still making these rookie mistakes here. Y'all are. Um, I was saying I, I had two surprises. One, uh, my first surprise was how unlucky I was. And then, how lucky I, I ultimately became. My uh, the unlucky story was uh, coming out of college again, uh, dismissing senior year, not wanting to go to college, identity crisis. What the heck am I going to do for the rest of my life? Stumbled around in the dark for for months. Worked on some campaigns. Uh, took another internship, uh, and then was was fortunate enough to find a a legis state legislator who gave me a part time shot. But about five weeks into that part time gig, he was indicted on 48 state and federal charges. So all of a sudden, poof, that, that job was, was going away. Uh, he was not running for re-election. And then um, through, through some luck, I, uh, I introduced myself to the guy who took his seat. And then uh, he, he, I worked on his campaign, he, he won. And uh, I, I've been with him now ever since. And he went from rookie legislator to speaker in, in eight years. And, uh, you know, I, I have the seat at the table with, uh, you know, some, some really great people, talented people, and, and get to have a, a, a huge influence on New Jersey public policy. So that is, uh, those, those were the two surprises that I got, uh, and I certainly could have never expected to be so unlucky uh, at first, and then ultimately become very lucky and very fortunate. Oh my gosh, that is a story I did not expect and definitely <laughs> added some flair to this conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you for that. Great. Okay. So, um, Matt, what skills have you found essential for success in your field? Uh, yeah. Um, I, you know, the, the thing that I, I um, push folks to, uh, my interns and, and other young professionals, um, is, is really writing, writing more than anything else. Um, you know, in, in politics, there's always going to be a necessity to network and, um, develop relationships and and those sorts of things and and as an introvert I've always struggled with with that part of of uh, of lobbying um, but you get used to it uh, but the the writing side of it is really just the the most important and seeking out any and all opportunities um, to write and so I, I tell folks you know in your in your internships now um, find find reasons to just keep writing and get constructive uh, feedback on that and when you go to, um, you know, your first jobs out of college, um, you know, know that people are looking closely at things like cover letters. Um, people are asking for writing samples for a reason. Uh, you know, those, those things really are important because when you're onboarding folks, you know, you can teach them, you know, where the copy room is and a schedule for the week, but, uh, you know, getting people up to speed on, on good solid writing is time consuming. Oh, absolutely. And that was a great point about being an introvert, too. I'm sure there are many introverts in this conversation. So it is possible. And I love that. It is possible. <laughs> Can make it. Uh, Nancy, what skills have you found essential for success in your field? You know, I, I think uh, the ability to listen well, uh, the ability, I, I think definitely communicating and in writing and just being able to communicate, you know, the ability to feel passionate about something, right? I mean, I think that you, you can always be so much more effective the more passion you bring to whatever you're doing. And so, you know, I guess my, my little point of advice would be, you know, that's the challenge here. How do you find your passion and pursue it? And uh, all the good things will come if you can find that passion. So that's, all of you are, are at the early points of your career and, um, you know, so it's it's finding a topic or a cause or a mission that really you can become passionate about and then being honest with yourself with what are your unique gifts that you can bring to that. So, um, you know, I would just always encourage you to, to um, be reflective and figure out your strengths and if you can figure out your passion. 
That is so fantastic. And so true. You will not find it fulfilling and you will not make as big of an impact if you're not passionate about it. So that was a fabulous point. Okay. So um, we are concluding with the final question and this will be for all panelists. What advice do you have for a new professional applying for their first job out of college, especially in the realm of political careers? And we will start with Ariel. So I'm in my wheelhouse is Capitol Hill. So the one thing I really have uh, a piece of advice is your reputation on the Hill is, is pretty much everything you have. Everybody knows you for who you are um, and you're going to get jobs based on your networking skills, how well you interact with people. So do that networking. And I know it's really hard right now virtually, but I, I have a mentee through my law school and I've recommended her to talk to people in the field she's interested in and, and, you know, ask the people you're interning for, Hey, do you know somebody that works on the Hill? Can you connect them by email and, and video chat with them, pick their brain. And that's what you need to do. If you're doing it virtually in person, you're going to sit down and get a cup of coffee with them. And you have to just keep doing that over and over. And every meeting you're in, you need to come out of it with maybe two more emails of people to reach out to. But the one thing is to treat my, my biggest piece of advice when you're applying for these jobs and you're asking people to recommend you is you treat every interaction you have with someone professionally as, as an informal interview, right? This is, you're, you're trying to build relationships and maybe friendships, but it is all professional in the end. So when you're applying for the jobs, make sure you reach out on the Hill. If you have somebody that recommends you to that office, you're more likely to get that job than if you're just going to apply. So poke around with your connections, figure out, hey, does anybody know somebody in this office that can recommend me and take every opportunity you can on the Hill. You may not really feel a strong connection with that, that member, but I think in the end, it's going to be a good stepping stone. You can go there. If you hate it, you can leave. But the Hill is a hard place to break into. I would say just don't turn down any opportunity and apply for everything and, and try to use your connections as much as possible to make those recommendations. That was such an excellent point. And even during a pandemic, everyone is available on Zoom. So I love that. Okay, Dan, what is your one piece of advice? Sure. Uh, my boss always says, because he's asked all the time, uh, you know, how do I get involved? And it's simply show up. Uh, I got my, my start through an internship. Again, I was saying I, I worked on a campaign and then it led to that part-time job. It was through an internship that I went to the the holiday party for the 19th legislative district and that's where I met uh the the future uh you know uh incarcerated guy but um you know that that led it was a stepping stone so I I couldn't tout uh you know just putting yourself out there showing up uh you know some of the other things I wanted to just throw in there in, in addition to internships is getting involved with you know the young democrats or the young republicans you know from there you're going to meet other people already within the field and they're going to know of job opportunities coming up or, or those internships that I, uh, I hit on. Uh, Ariel had mentioned this about finding a mentor. Uh, I find in our field, and I'm sure the other panelists would agree, that there, there's a certain culture of helping the younger generation out and bringing them along. I know I've had multiple people who helped um, help me along you know, those, those first couple of years when I'm trying to find myself. And, uh, and, and later, maybe even poke around at, at other jobs. Ultimately, I never left, but uh, those mentors were still there. And as Ariel said, I, I would certainly, uh, you know, uh, hit the nail on the, on the coffin on, on the point of, of your reputation. You know, uh, you would think D.C. is, is huge and, and, and maybe your reputation wouldn't go as far, uh, but it, evidently it does. I would say at the state legislative level, it's it's even more uh, significant because it's a smaller field. There's frankly not as many lobbyists or, or legislative staffers as there are on Capitol Hill. So the same thing applies at the state legislative level about your reputation. It precedes you. And, uh, you know, just one final point about those internships. Uh, Ariel had, had also touched on it uh, in terms of uh, reputation and so on and that informal job interview. When you intern for somebody, make sure you put your best foot forward because those employers are going to recommend you for certain jobs. And they're not gonna put their reputations on the line if, if, if you don't have good work ethic or, or you don't show up to work on time or, or you're uh, flaky, whatever the case may be. So uh, that's my, uh, I don't know, 11 pieces of advice there, but uh, I, I think it all, it all matters. So good luck to everybody in your search. Those were fantastic. And I'm loving the, the overlap in some of these themes sure. there. Yeah, especially with state legislator versus Capitol Hill. That was such a good differentiation as well. So fabulous. 
Okay, so Matt, what about you? What are some tips or one major tip that you may recommend? Uh, I'll just go ahead and second everything uh, that my fellow panelists have, have pointed out. You know, those are all great pieces of advice. And then just circle back on um, two points. Uh, the first is remember uh, Washington's a big city, a big region. Uh, if your dream is to end up, you know, working, you know, uh, in Congress, follow your dream. Um, but, you know, there are many Hill adjacent things. There's a whole association world. Um, you know, there's, there's an association for absolutely everything, and I'm not kidding, and they all have, um, you know, government affairs people, um, you know, the corporate world, uh, you know, major corporations all have government affairs offices, exactly. Um, you know, in Washington, D.C., there's opportunity there. Um, you know, my ability to influence uh, what was going on on the Hill at 23 was significantly greater in my role at uh, the National Foreign Trade Council uh, than it would have been working in uh, a, a congressman's office. Um, and just think about that. Um, think about what you know, path your, your career might take. And then uh, secondly, uh, be patient. Uh, Washington has a pace. It is not fast <laughs> in any way, shape, or form, uh, but perhaps especially in the career department. Um, you know, there's going to be multiple steps. There's going to be websites uh, that will drive you insane. You know, usajobs.gov. Uh, you know, they're They'll seem crazy and bottomless and all those other sorts of things, but you know, stick with it and trust the process and you'll be fine. That was such a fantastic point about the pace too, because otherwise you'd be so freaked out, like no one's contacting you. So I love that. And the adjacent piece, it is not just all hill jobs. You can see there's a variety. So I love that point. And last but not least, Nancy, what is your one tip you would recommend? Yeah. I mean, I would say once you get the job, my advice would be stay in the job. Don't, you know, I, I see so often that young people, you know, want to move around and see the next best thing. I would say dig in. I know for me, I won't look at a resume with anybody that's moved around a lot. I mean, it just, it's a red flag. Uh, so, you know, you got to dig in, even though it's not perfect and just realize that, you know, all of these experiences are learning experiences. You're looking to have people that are going to root for you and wish you well and give you a recommendation, but don't be quick to move around. That, you know, your generation does that a lot. Uh, you know, always looking for the better thing, but you'll get so much more and succeed uh, in a greater way if you stay in and dig in and, and um, you know, that's my advice. That is such a good point because it, it's so true. We see students moving around constantly, young people. So that is a really great point of something that they may be looking at when they're hiring you. So thank you.